Hello everyone. Uh, I know it's uh, been a while. Uh, so this is maybe the last performance in today's competition. So I know you also you also tired. So bear with me. Uh, so my uh, so my presentation is about cyberbullying. Uh, so as you all know, my name is Kang, but maybe some of you here. Um, will know me as a piece of bread from my social media accounts. Um, from YouTube, I have 20 million subscribers. Um, and my Discord, my Facebook, all are a piece of bread. Um, and I, uh, so as you can see, I am a quite an active person on social media platforms. So I've come to realize a problem, an ongoing problem with all of these. The thing that concerns me the most is cyberbullying as in the title. So here, these four are the most popular platforms when, it's com when it comes to cyberbullying. Can, can anyone tell me, um, can anyone name these four types of social media platforms? Okay, you, like. Uh, the first one is Instagram, and then there's Snapchat, Facebook, and I won't call it, X, no, it's Twitter. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, uh, these four social media platforms are the most common um, and associated the most with Sarah bullying. And for, to give you a, a kind of a refreshing view, I have a little Oh, wait, there's... Oh yeah, uh, let's define uh, cyberbullying. So, cyberbullying is the use of electronic uh, communications, to, uh, typically uh, via you know, text messages to in a threatening or intimidating nature to bully someone. Um, it's commonly used um, by teenagers, even older people um, through various flat platforms, maybe social media uh, or even gaming platforms. So I have a new type of view. Most of you now have known cyberbullying through the victim, but i like to bring you uh, why, why is it? Okay, so my personal story. So, as you all know, uh, sorry bullying is often associated with the victims who told you about their stories. But in in this presentation, um, I was not the witness. I was not even the victim. I was the bully. Wow. So it started a few years back. Um, I met this individual. I didn't hate him, or I didn't really have anything that I don't like. He's quite a new person to school, so and I kind of I didn't really hate him. I really enjoyed spending time with him, but somehow uh, it turned out that I was being toxic with him because for no particular reason and uh, before I even knew it, I was started bullying him, offending him, harassing him on a daily basis. And it, uh, it started as a joke because well, I didn't think thought much of it because I was so naive and I didn't, I didn't think it would bring any consequences until he transfers, uh, he transferred to a, another school and until that, until then, it hit me. Um, I was being a villain in, in someone else's story, and I couldn't bear that because I was always trying to be the good person, the you know the happy, the goofy friend amongst the friend group, and I and I realized that Sarah bullying is a bad thing and. Soon enough, uh, I was overwhelmed by guilt 
uh, guiltiness and regrets, and I I'd wish to meet that specific individual again to you know really apologize to him. And I know the damage has been done, but I hope I can meet him sometime to you know undo a part of that damage that I've done to him. So I um, I've got some things on my mind that I've learned through my experience. Um, because I was a cyberbully, um, the cyberbullying, uh, it also affects, uh, it doesn't uh, only affect the victim, it also affects you know, the bully themselves. It caused um, emotional damage to both sides. And uh, I've learned that you should when you're being cyberbullied, you should be uh, you should practice self care. So what this uh, what this mean is you should uh, attend to like the activities that uh, improve your mental health overall. Uh, then the most realistic um, solution for you when being cyberbullied is to block and report them because. Well, if you don't want to be cyberbullied by a specific individual, then you just need to block them and never see them, see them again. It's really simple, but some of them, uh, some of uh, us may cannot do it. And if you're attempting to cyber, uh, if you're attempting to uh, like you know cyberbully someone, please don't go on my path. Don't follow my footsteps, uh, footsteps because. Uh, it will bring consequences, maybe even um, legal to uh, like legal activities to be involved and think wisely before you post something so that you don't hurt others and especially uh, bring you to a bad mood and uh, yeah that's all so so that's it for my presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Our final contestant. How do you feel standing here right now? Quite nervous. Quite nervous? Yeah. Even at this point in time? I yeah. think you do pretty good. Yeah, thanks. So I would like to ask you a question. So you mentioned about your personal stories with cyberbullying. So I would like to ask you, why is it so easy for people to spread hate and, and harassment or speak badly about someone on the internet? Well, first is because it's, uh, it's on the internet. You do it an anonymously, so no one or uh, anyone can really identify you. And it's to identify someone on the internet, especially with an alt account, it's quite hard. Yeah, so that's why, it's one of the main reasons why spreading hate or accusing, uh, falsely accusing someone is really easy on the internet. Thank you very much. You may, oh, you don't need to choose, there's only one left. Yes, there's only one option left. Alright, can you please read aloud your number please? It's number nine. Number nine! Your one minute start now. Okay, so are you ready? Yep. Right, go for it. Okay, so um, Facebook is uh, a social media and it's not a diary. This means that 
Um, there, uh, these days, a lot of teenagers, uh, they share their memories, uh, their mostly memories and moments on social media. And I mean, it's a good thing because uh, you want to save it and you can maybe later you can watch it back or after a few years you can see that how you've been developed. But it has a downside for self because uh, everyone can see your post. You shouldn't be posting anything, really. You shouldn't be uh, posting anything, like most of your insecurities uh, on social media platforms because um, like it's for the public because everyone and everyone, your friends, your family members can see it. So it's not really uh, that secure and maids and some people can use it against you to make you feel depressed or harass you for your insecurity. So it's a good idea to uh, keep it low and not really post anything on social media.